welcome you tonight. We want to invite you to take a hymn book and turn to hymn number 252. Hymn 252, and let's stand together tonight. And we'll sing the Lily of the Valley. Let's stand together. 252. thank the Lord for our time together and, and uh, just look forward to uh, what he has for us here today. Steve, will you pray for us? Thank you so much. You can be seated as we listen to the choir.
choir is going to come down. Let's stand together for a little while. Greet one another. together. Let the Lord have his way. If you don't know it yet, it's in the bulletin on the one of the back pages, but help me sing it. We'll sing it together. Let the Lord have his way. great time this morning and appreciated the message and uh, the time together and we're excited to be back together tonight and uh, spending some time uh, together and looking forward to getting into the Bible in just a moment and uh, we want to remind you that about some of the things that are going on in the life of our church. Don't forget uh, to mark down uh, the meeting with Dr. Geiler and the Marietta Bible College Choir. We moved it and it's going to be on uh, Monday, March the 16th. And so uh, a week from tomorrow at 7 p.m. So we want you to come and be a part of that. And uh, we're still going to feed the choir on Monday like we had planned on doing uh, that Friday. So if you signed up to be a part of uh, that, uh, we hope you can still do that. If something's changed, make sure you let us know just so we can be prepared for that. Uh, but we're looking forward to that. And uh, Pastor shared with us this morning, uh, Dr. Geiler not feeling well. And, and uh, so we're praying for him and just he'll be able to have enough strength to come and preach for us and uh, get the choir here. So we're looking forward to that and, and uh, thankful for uh, the opportunity to have them. And then don't forget next Sunday night in the Sunday evening service, or after the Sunday evening service rather, we'll have our next uh, Sunday family fun days. We want to encourage you to come on Sunday night, bring your family, and we'll have banana splits after the service. So we're looking forward to that 
and uh, excited about it. So don't miss out on those things. We started the new Building with the Bible Hour classes today. And uh, so if you didn't, if you weren't a part of one of those, hope you'll come uh, next week and jump right in to one of those classes. You'll find them in the bulletin and you'll enjoy uh, being a part of one of those. And uh, so we're looking forward to all these things. Well, uh, we will ask our ushers to come. We'll take up our, our uh, tithes and our offering, our missions offering this evening. So we'll ask our ushers to come. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. everyone tonight and uh, we can see everyone real well with this daylight change the way we have it we've got all this daylight now at the end of the day so that's a good thing uh, not so good in to get up in the dark maybe but it's good to have that daylight but we're glad you're here it's been a great day and uh, we're thankful for it we're moving right on into March and, and then April will be right around the corner Easter will be here uh, so uh, we're praying and looking forward to a great season this time of the year. It's a great time of the year as everything uh, starts to come back to life. And uh, we get to be reminded of uh, the resurrection. So we're thankful, thankful people. Sunday nights we receive our change offering for camp. And uh, we just keep in mind that camp's coming and it's the first full week of June. And uh, we need your help with that. Uh, we're praying families will go and just spend that week and invest it in the lives of those boys and girls. Uh, that will be a part of our camp. As now, then don't forget to be praying and planning, preparing, putting something aside at home uh, on your own in your family so that when it comes time for camp, uh, we'll be able to take care of those expenses and get that, uh, get that taken care of in a good, timely way. And, uh, it's a great investment. It's a good investment uh, that we make. So uh, be ready for it. Don't let it get up on you. Uh, make plans now. So we just take this offering up to remind ourselves about it. And uh, so you get uh, your offering ready if you have some to give. And uh, we're going to get our boys and girls to come up and give us a hand. So come on up here and help us out. All right. We're going to pray together and let them... Get their job done here. Lord, we thank you for being good to us. We ask your blessings on the children's change offering for camp and help us, Lord, to keep it at the top of our prayer list. And Lord, let us pray purposely and uh, Lord, let us be prepared people counting the cost and uh, putting back something in our homes, uh, setting it aside for camp so that we can give and invest and uh, make a difference in that ministry. We thank you for it. Bless these children, their families, Lord, for uh, making the choice uh, of the good, uh, Lord, over the best and choosing the best. And that's to be here tonight. And we thank you for that. We ask your blessings on uh, the offering tonight as we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have some offering, hold your hand up there. They're going to pick it up for you.
boys and girls for helping us out, taking up our church off, church camp offering, and we're looking forward to that. Before our pastor comes to preach for us tonight, uh, we have a special song uh, from a group, so we're going to invite them to come now and sing uh, that song. I appreciate that. Good song tonight and uh, good choir singing and just a good place to be on Sunday evening. We're thankful for it and a great way uh, just to spend our day here in the house of the Lord. We're glad you're here and we talked this morning about several things that are uh, going on and as we move toward Easter we want to uh, go ahead and just remind everyone uh, about the Easter resources we're going to try to have uh, for you in the Welcome and Resource Center, so be sure to uh, keep plenty of these items with you and use them throughout the Easter season. Uh, it's not too early to begin to ask people and get them thinking about being your guest on Easter, and so pick up some of the, uh, the gospel tracts or invitation cards that we have back there. We have the door hangers that you can leave on, on doors. Uh, they'll fit over the doorknob or over door handles, and you can leave that little invitation if someone isn't home. Uh, be sure to pick those up uh, while you're uh, here and keep plenty of them and begin to use them. And then one thing we gave out this morning, and we want to be sure that everyone in the service tonight has one of these, uh, is the My Three card that we passed out last year for the first time. And uh, we want to give one to everyone and be sure that everyone has one. So you may be here tonight, but you weren't here this morning, uh, and we want to get you one of these. So if you weren't here this morning, would you care just to 
slip your hand up, let people see you. There's a few folks here. Uh, we want to be sure to get one of these to you. And we used these last year. And uh, many of you helped us with this, uh, this, uh, this project. And uh, what we're asking all of our folks to do is to just prayerfully uh, identify three people or families that you could invite to Easter and uh, place them on this card. That's number one, is identify three people or families, put them on the card, and then get a little information from them, either their phone number or email. You may already have that. And uh, then number two is to pray for them. You'll see it right at the bottom. Pray for those three people or families. Uh, then gather up resources. And that means to take the resources we're making available to you and the others that we'll have in addition to these as we move closer to Easter. And uh, then contact these folks and give them the resources and give them an invitation and continue praying. And then uh, after you've spoken to them initially, wait a week or so and follow up on them and say, hey, I hope you're still thinking about that. We're still hoping you'll come with us. And then make another uh, follow-up uh, the week of Easter, the week leading up to Easter, a few days before. Give them another contact and just tell them, hey, uh, it's coming up Sunday and uh, give them all the details and uh, let them know that you hope to see them there that day. So I'll have my three and you'll have your three. And if we all have someone from our list come, uh, we would double the attendance that we would have just immediately on a Sunday like Easter. And uh, so we want to do all we can do to get folks here to hear about the great message of the resurrection. Uh, another of the things that are available back there for you today is the marriage retreat registration card. And uh, I had one turned in already this morning. I do have a limited number of rooms we reserve. There, the, it's exciting down there. There's a big geological uh, conference going on that weekend. <laughs> geological conference is going on at Greenbow. And so, uh, <laughs> so it's going to be filled with geologists. And so... Uh, we could have only a, a limited number of rooms that we had available to us, uh, but we do have some. You want to get your card and get it turned into me or let me know for sure you're going. Uh, you don't have to have your payment in until the last Sunday of the month. And uh, you can just uh, make that, uh, if you write a check, make it to the church. If you give cash, mark it on the envelope for the marriage retreat, and uh, we'll have a record of that. But be sure to let me know so that I can keep track on those rooms and see where we're at. And, uh, and so be sure to pick one up. They're in the Welcome and Resource Center. You can get you one on the way out and then just let me know as soon as you can. It'll be a fun time. We'll, uh, we'll get started about, uh, well, we're going to ask folks to be there at 6.30 on Friday evening. We'll get you settled in your rooms. We'll start about 7 and uh, have a session. We'll take a break. We're going to take plenty of snacks. Uh, you'll have to get your own meal on the way in uh, that evening get your own dinner, and uh, then we'll have some snacks and refreshments, and then we're going to do another uh, little portion of the retreat after that time, and then we'll just have some fellowship time, and, uh, those kind of things. Uh, they do have breakfast available at the, at the lodge, and you can go down in the restaurant and have breakfast on, uh, on uh, Saturday morning, and I know it'll be a good breakfast, and uh, she said if they have, you know, uh, enough uh, overall uh, people that they know are interested, they'll even do a buffet, and uh, or the, otherwise you just order off the menu. Uh, but that's what we'll do, and uh, you can do that if you like or not, or whatever. You can take some Pop-Tarts if you want, uh, but uh, you can have breakfast, and then we'll have another session in the morning, and then we'll be out of there by 11.30 or so. You'll have the rest of your day. And you may just want to stick or hang around down there a little while, drive around. Maybe it'll be a pretty day. And uh, you can uh, walk around some or uh, see some of the things that are there that's a beautiful place. We went down last week just to check it out again. I hadn't been there for a long time. I just wanted to be sure it all still looks nice and, and everything looks good. So, uh, so we're set uh, for that. We hope you'll make uh, uh, the arrangements to go with us. You'll have a good time away. And if you have children, uh, do your best to try to make arrangements and and get someone, uh, pay, if you can pay them enough to watch your kids overnight, uh, you'll be all right. And uh, I know we have maybe a couple people in the church that have volunteered to help with that. If you maybe have, uh, you're looking for someone maybe to come in and, 
and uh, even stay in your home that night or something. Uh, uh, let us know if you're looking for someone or need some help in that area. We'll do what we can to try to help people make those arrangements uh, that might be needed. Uh, so we're thankful for that opportunity. Why don't you take your Bibles this evening, Dan, and let's open them up to the New Testament book of James. And uh, we're going to read some scripture in verse uh, chapter number 1, beginning with verse 1. And uh, we've been talking all year about rising up and building together. And we kind of had a... Uh, uh, a, a, a building blueprint, a plan that we're talking about as we talk about rising up and building. Uh, we said we wanted to rise up and build uh, our personal relationship with the Lord. We wanted to strengthen it. We wanted to build it. And uh, that's something that I hope you want to do throughout the course of the year. Uh, we said we wanted to strengthen and build biblical marriages and our relationships. Uh, marriages, husbands and wives families, uh, parents and their children. We want to build and strengthen those relationships biblically. Uh, we said we want to strengthen our church so that we uh, will be a church where people can come and uh, they'll have the opportunity to know the Lord as their Savior and serve the Lord as their Savior. And then you know, we've talked about uh, how we want to build and strengthen our church's outreach into the world so that we can reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we want to rise up and build. And so we're looking at, uh, at elements or building materials that will help us to build. And tonight we want to look at uh, this idea of faith. Rise up and build by faith. And James is a book about faith. And I want you to see what uh, it says as we open it up and begin to look at it. In James chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 1, I'm going to just read down to verse number 8 and you can follow along with us here. James chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The Bible said, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable, in all of his ways. And uh, if you mark your Bible, mark in verse 6 that phrase, ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. And that's what I want you to look at with me tonight, is the idea of rising up and building by faith, by faith. Lord, thank you for the word of God. Our faith is in the scriptures. Lord, we believe that they are eternal. They are forever settled in the heaven, that they will, God, uh, continue uh, even after uh, this heaven and earth passes away and forever God your eternal word is sure and so Lord it is that anchor and it is that foundation for our lives it ensures our eternity and God it gives us strength day by day and so help us Lord as we deal with this subject of faith there's no doubt about it that our relationship with you is based on faith we're saved by faith. We're to walk by faith. And we're to build our lives by faith. And so we trust tonight, God, you would speak to our hearts about faith, increase our faith and strengthen it. And Lord, we pray that you'll meet each person here at the very place of need they have. And Lord, maybe someone in the service is here. And Lord, they've never trusted you as their Savior. They've never, uh, they've never come to you and, and by faith put their trust in your finished work and receive the gift of eternal life. God, we pray they'll see that today's the day to do that. In fact, the moment we know we need to be is the time that we should. And so, Lord, uh, speak to hearts about faith. And, and Lord, we're trusting you to do tonight in all of us uh, what it is that you only can do. And we'll thank you for what you do. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, should we ask of God? Some people... Some people will say that, you know, we shouldn't even ask anything of God. 
But I think the Bible clearly states that we should ask. But I believe that it also clearly shows us that if we ask, we must ask by faith, doesn't it? We must ask by faith. Uh, there will come trials into all of our lives. Uh, we know that we are to allow the trials to do their work. Uh, the Bible says that, that the work of trials is the work of patience, to work patience in our lives through these trials. The biblical word patience means to abide under. This is what it means. And I hope you'll consider that in relationship to trials. Patience. Let patience have her perfect work. Uh, patience. Patience means to abide under. Biblical patience in the trials of life is to see and know that God has not abandoned you. Even in the trials, He has not abandoned you. Patience is to, is to see and know that God is with you even in the trial. That God is working, in fact, in you in the trial. And to abide under Him. Uh, don't, don't look somewhere else. Don't, don't run. Don't flee. Don't turn. But abide under the Lord in Him, knowing that you are under His hand even in that trial. And the patient work of trials brings spiritual maturity into our lives. It helps us to grow. Now, I just want to give you these simple things, and I'll ask that if you will, just to write down the first one. Faith will grow the saved spiritually. Faith will grow the saved spiritually. Verse 4 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Patience. It has a purpose. There's a work that God is doing in it when we abide under it. And the idea of perfect here, this Bible word perfect, it means, it means maturity. It means growth. Perfect. Let patience have her perfect work. Patience work is a growing work. Patience work is a maturing work in our spiritual lives. It has to do with the idea of perception. Perception. The way we see things. You know, when, you, when you're a grown-up, some of us maybe are old. I don't know if we're always grown-up or not. But uh, as a grown-up, you know, we learn that we have to deal with things that aren't always favorable. That's not normally a part of life as a child. Most of our children, uh, we protect them from, we buffer them from uh, things that are not pleasant, things that are difficult, things that are hard. But we know as adults, we have to deal with those things that, and, and those things that aren't favorable. They're, they're a part of being a grown-up, aren't they? And we also understand that as a grown-up, we have a perspective about things that children do not see, they do not have. Sometimes we'll have to have those conversations and we'll, we'll tell our children what doesn't seem to help them at all is someday you'll understand. Someday you'll see this from my perspective, see. Uh, that's a part of being a grown-up. And you know, uh, God wants each of us to grow up spiritually. He wants us to grow up in our spiritual lives. He wants us to mature uh, in Romans 12, that's a, a favorite passage of Scripture. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, of course, is, is Scripture that I've committed to memory. You may have too. Uh, we beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God, but num verse number 3 goes on to say, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. I, I want you to consider tonight that God gives to each of us a measure of faith. God gives us faith, a measure. When we measure something, we understand that it's incremental. 
And uh, sometimes we speak about grace that way. Sometimes we understand and know that God gives more grace. Uh, we understand that God gives that dying grace, that we may not possess it right now, but when we need it, He'll give it to us. But faith is similar. He gives us a measure of faith for the moment of life. He'll give us as much faith as we will use. And when we're able to use it, when we're grown up enough to use it, He'll give us more and our faith will grow. He gives us a measure of faith. God gives us the faith to believe and to be saved. He gives us faith to trust Him, to obey and to grow. And as we learn and receive the truths of God's Word, the Lord Jesus will increase in our hearts and lives. As, he, as we learn, as we receive truth from God's Word, as we, as we act upon those truths by faith, then He will increase in our life and we will decrease. As He increases, we will decrease. As He increases, all other things will decrease. The need for anything and anyone but Him will decrease as our faith grows in Him. We look to Jesus Christ more and more and we'll see that He is greater than anyone or anything as He gives us more faith, as we use that faith and as we grow, as patience does that work in our life, we will grow spiritually by faith. We will grow spiritually by faith, our, our lives, the saved. And so uh, I, want you to, I want you to think about that, to consider that. And then think about number two, faith will save the lost. It will save the lost eternally. Faith will save the lost. Faith to trust the finished work of Jesus Christ and to be saved is a divine gift. It's a divine gift. Now, in Ephesians 2, the Bible says in verse 8 and verse 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That's one of those phrases where we got to stop, and we don't want to go forward till we're really sure about that, because it takes a little bit of reading. By grace are you saved through faith. And that, what, what, that, that faith, that faith that, that we need to be saved, I want you to see, is a gift of God. The very faith we need to be saved and receive the gift of eternal life is a gift of God as well. We, we see it here. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is of, is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. Every bit of it. I, I speak to people. I, I know and have dealt with people who, who will look at biblical salvation as you first try to present it to them. And they'll say, well, there has to be more than this. There has to be something more. It, it can't be just me simply believing. It can't be me just simply surrendering my sin to the Lord and believing He paid for it and that it's paid in full, that He will forgive me and that I can have eternal life. There's people that struggle with that. It's our nature to struggle with that. We, we feel like that can't be enough. But the Bible said it's by faith, by the grace of God. Grace being that God gives us what we don't deserve. God, through grace, gives us the opportunity to be saved. And he gives us the faith to trust the Lord to complete the transaction so that it's all of God. It's all of God in grace and faith. And it's not of man. Eleven Romans chapter 11, Paul writes to the church in Rome. Uh, and of Rome, of course, uh, was one of the pioneering societies in the world with law and legality. The law, the Roman Senate, is still a model of law and how to have a uh, a, a law system around the world. Uh, they were steeped in the law and legalism. And Paul wrote to the believers in that church, and he said in Romans eleven six, 6, and if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. And I want you to see today that salvation cannot be by grace and by works. It cannot be by both because they are mutually exclusive. 
uh, that cannot, uh, one cannot be where the other is present. There cannot be grace where there's works present. And there will not be works where there is grace present. And the Bible said we are saved by grace through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is the grace gift of God. It's, it's received and realized by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. There, there is the confession of our sin. And then there is the call upon God for forgiveness. There's the rest that God will hear and do what He promised in His Word. This is all through faith. The assurance of our salvation is an inward faith in the foundation of the truths and promises of God's Word. Our assurance is by faith. Faith in the Word of God. God enables that faith, uh, that God enables uh, faith uh, to believe within our hearts and lives. God enables that faith. That, that wouldn't be possible without God giving us that. That's a miraculous thing that God will give to that man a, a measure of faith. Isn't it an amazing, almost really unexplainable thing when you were born again, when you were saved, what God did within your heart and life. Something that you thought may have been impossible. And God did that in you. And you know that God did that. And we have that reality in our hearts and lives today. God did that. He is enabling that faith in our hearts and lives. So, so God will grow us by faith if we are a born again believer. He, he'll, he'll grow us. He'll give us a measure and then He'll give us more as we, as we utilize that faith. He, he gives us that measure of faith. Faith, uh, faith is, uh, is our confidence in who God is. Faith is, 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 is uh, in our, our confidence in what God has done for us and what He has said for us. Faith is Hebrews 12.2. Faith is looking unto Jesus. That's faith. Looking unto Him. The author and finisher of our faith. Faith is looking Godward, not inward. Faith is looking Godward and not outward. Faith is looking Godward and not manward to man. Faith, faith is a confidence in Jesus Christ that leads us to trust Him and obey Him. Faith is obedience. Obedience to the will of God and to the Word of God. Faith is... Faith is to grow. Faith is to be a growing thing. A growing faith believes God for greater things. A growing faith believes God for fuller things. More complete things. As we trust God with more and more. As we grow in our relationship with Him, we let go of things and we give Him more. And we trust Him ever more and more. It deepens and it widens and it begins to encompass more things. It encompasses our relationships. It begins to encompass our children and then our grandchildren. And we just have to put them in the hand of God. And we just have to trust God. And it's an ever-growing, ever-widening, ever-deepening thing. And, uh, and that's the way that God would have it to be. Romans 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we need God's Word. The more we hear, the more we have to believe. And our faith grows as we exercise it. We believe and, and we live and walk by faith and we grow spiritually. Let me ask you today, are you growing in the Lord? Do you believe Him for more now than you did? Are you trusting Him with more of your life now than you have before? We're to grow. It will grow us as believers. It will grow our lives spiritually. But it will save the lost eternally. Nothing else will. Not works. Not anything you can do. Because He's done it all. And we can trust Him. And He'll give us that measure of faith to save us. And then He will give us faith for us to grow. Faith. We build by faith. And then I just want you to write down the last thought. Boy, you're excited, aren't you? We're already to point number three. That's all right. The rest has all been an introduction. Now I'm going to settle in. No. It is faith that will work for you in your life. Faith, faith will, will work for you. It, it, it will do what nothing else can do. James, our text, he says in verse 2, My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Trials are God's gift to us. They're God's gift to us to move us toward Him. 
sometimes we get in a place in our life where there's where where they're just we're not going anywhere. And the only way to get closer is God will give us a trial. He'll give us a trial. And that will move us toward Him. It will move us to begin to ask Him in faith. Faith. Faith ensures, faith ensures sincere humility. We recognize we cannot, but that He can. And we ask Him. We ask Him in faith. James 4, you can flip over just a page or two just to mark the verse. James 4, 6 says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Trials turn us to God. They cause us to ask God in faith. And they cause us to be humble in our asking. Because we're acknowledging that we cannot. We cannot. And that's where God then really can begin to go to work. Is when we realize we cannot. But that He can. And faith in God begins when we come to the end of ourself. When, when, we, when we come to the end and let go and believe that God can and ask God to. Then that's when God really begins to go to work. That's God's greatest desire. His greatest desire is for us to let Him be the God that He is for us. That's, that's what He wants. And we can't do that except by faith. And sometimes He has to give us a trial to turn us back to Him humbly to come to Him and ask Him in faith. God, God is looking. God is waiting and watching for us to take that step of faith toward Him. He's waiting for us to have a look of faith looking unto Jesus, to look to Him in faith. He's just waiting for that. He's just looking for that. Now, we all have waited for and watched for a child or a grandchild to take that first step. All eyes are on them, isn't it? I mean, it's, I don't want to miss it. I, I, I can't believe you let them take their first step while I was at work, you know, that kind of thing. We're all watching that step when, they, when that, that little toddler, they finally let go. You know, they forget about uh, what it, it is or whatever. And, and they just l let go and they step forward. And, you know, we do it. We, we put them between mom and dad and we push them out there. Go on now. Go, go to daddy or go to mommy. And we're pushing them back and forth, you know, every now and then. Maybe knock them down a little bit. But I didn't mean to, honey. I didn't mean to do that. But we're waiting for them to do that, to, to, to put their eyes on their mother or put their eyes on their father and take those first steps. That's what we're all waiting for. But that's what God is waiting for. He's waiting for the same thing, for us just to take our eyes off of the outward circumstances and situations and take our eyes off of us inwardly and take our eyes off of others and just look to Him. To have faith in Him. To, to have that look of faith. To, to take that step of faith. To begin to ask Him by faith. And, uh, and faith takes work. We have to practice it. We have to exercise faith. Just, just like that toddler, they're going to fall and then they're going to get back up again and do it all over again until they get it figured out. Until they get stronger in this thing. Until they get those muscles exercised and those little feet and ankles stronger so they can, they can take those steps. And we have to do the same thing. We, we do not do works to get faith. But, but we work for the Lord, for our families, to reach the lost because we have faith. Because we have faith in a God who can do all things. And so that's why we do what we do. Faith, true faith will work. It will, it will go at it. Faith will go at it. Faith will stay with it through the hard times, through the lean times, when it seems like nothing's going on, when it seems like everything is in vain. Stay, faith will just dig in and stay at it and go at it and keep at it because it believes. 
It believes that that labor's not in vain, that that word of God indeed will not return void, that even though we cannot see it uh, with the eye, God is doing a work in the heart, and so we just stay with it. Faith, faith, true faith will work. James chapter 2, he says in chapter 2, and I want you to understand as you read through this passage that it isn't about works, it's about faith. That's the focus. That's what the whole chapter is about. This is just a simple illustration. Don't take it out of context. He says in James 2 verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Being alone. Now, I want you to, I want you to take this illustration as, as, as it is. James said, listen, you can tell me you have faith, but I can show you mine. I can show it to you because it's changed my life. It's made me the person I am today. It's brought me to where I could have never gone. It's, it's used me for things I could have never been used for. It's accomplished things through my life that, that I could have never accomplished without faith, without looking to Jesus, without that look of faith, without asking Him in faith, without abiding under Him through those trials and allowing Him to give me that extra measure of faith to grow. Unless that I had committed more and more of my life to Him, uh, I, I would have nothing to, to show for uh, the faith that, that you say you have. But James said, you can say you have it and maybe not have anything to show for it, but true faith, there will be plenty there to be seen because it changes our life. This is what James is saying. He said, you can tell me you have it, but I can show you I do. Look at the things God has done. Look at what God has done in my life and through my life. And I just want to ask you tonight, how has your faith affected your life? Show me how your faith in Jesus Christ has changed your life. Because we ought to all be able to do that. To different degrees, to different measures. But true faith, true faith affects us. It can be seen in us. We can see faith. It's tangible. We may think that faith is some mystical, elusive thing that we can't ever get our hands on or ever see it, but it's not that way. Faith is a tangible thing. Faith is a visible thing. Faith is something that can be seen in our life because it changes our life. It, it causes us to be the people we are, to do the things we choose to do and not to be what we're what we once used to be. Faith does that. We're, we're not doing it to get faith. We're doing it because we have faith. And, the, and I, I just want to encourage you tonight. Faith changes everything. True faith will change everything. Rise and build. Rise and build. But, but it has to be done by faith. Faith will grow us spiritually. Faith will grow us. And faith saves the lost eternally. It's the only thing. It's the only way. Anything that's not of faith is of works. And if it is of works, it is not of grace. And salvation is by the grace of God. It's a grace gift of God. And faith will be what will work for you. That's what's going to work. You can try a thousand things in life and start all over again and do this and that, and try to do it all different. But without faith, without looking unto Jesus, things will never, never be different in your life. But faith will work. Faith will do it. We want to encourage you tonight. Rise up and build by faith. By faith. Lord, we've looked at your word tonight. We thank you, God. You've given us your word. It's a faith builder. 
through the Word of God, we see you. We see who you are, what you've done, what you promised you will do. We see, God, that you're with the believer right now in trials, out of trials, in the good times and the difficult times. God, let patience have her work of perfecting us and growing us. Help us just to abide under you when it's hard. And Lord, help us to realize that you're with us in that trial, that difficult time. In fact, God, you're using it in our life for our good. Faith, God, makes Romans 8.28 real. And so, Lord, help us to be people of faith. Help us to grow in our faith. Help us, Lord, to allow our, uh, our lives to be taken over more and more by faith in you, looking to you, and, Lord, following you, your will and your word. And so bless the night, uh, God. May we be obedient people. However you've spoken to hearts and lives, God, may there be a look of faith in their heart. May there be, Lord, upon their lips, a petition of faith. And God, maybe tonight they just need to slip out of their seat and come. And Lord, by that public action, uh, Lord, though we may never know their conversation, God, it's just a, a testimony of faith in you, that they believe, Lord, in you, that you can. And so, Lord, we pray we'll be people of faith. Lord, help someone tonight to realize that it's by grace through faith, this thing. God, you gave your son. Your son's perfect and sinless. He died on the cross. And, Lord, he rose again from the dead. He has the gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sin, and he will give it as we put our faith and trust in him and ask him by faith to save us. And then, Lord, help those realize tonight that it is in the works. There isn't anything else, God, that can be done or added to what you did. You said on the cross, it is finished. Help them trust God by faith in your finished work for their heart and life. We ask these things tonight in Jesus' name. And amen. Let's stand together. and We're playing hymn 296. And uh, however the Lord has spoken to your heart, you just be obedient to him this evening. We sing that very first verse, hymn number seriously and that uh, we truly live our lives in faith by faith uh, and uh, it, what a privilege it is in that verse that we can go to the Lord in faith and and make petitions with him uh, ask for help when we need it and rejoice with him uh, when we're excited and sorrow with him when we're sad and and uh, get the help and guidance we need uh, day to day it's all available to us if we can live by faith and uh, we're thankful for those truths and uh, we want to be Christians now that put these uh, truths to practice, that live them out, that are doers of the word. And so uh, we'll pray and that the Lord will help us to do. 
be safe. But it's been a great day today. We're glad you've been here, and, and uh, we just want to finish with a word of prayer, but thank the Lord uh, for the great day uh, that he's given us. John, will you pray for us? Thank you.